Good day, my schoolers. You are welcome to my school channel and my name is Abela. Remember, in this channel, you will join me to solve the jam secret. Past question for the subject Power of Jesus in 2012. Do not go anywhere. Stay with us. Cause we'll be right back. questions 18 to 33 so join me as we start with question 18 an example of a fruit that develops from a single carpel is what a single carpel can also be referred to as a monocarpal so a monocarpal is um, kind of setting you are looking at examples like cowpea and maize okay uh, syncarpals two or more carpels freeze together to form a structure that will be okra tomato and pop up so the correct option here is option c for bean question 19 plant growth can be artificially stimulated by the addition of what okay so when you talk about um, plant growth hormones or plant growth substances we are looking at the major ones that influence growth that is oxane and gibberellin okay um, the main effect or the main function of gibberellin is to affect um, cell elongation and that is in the stem okay of course it takes part or it actually has an um, influence when it comes to cell division and um, cell differentiation okay but majorly we are looking at cell elongation so the correct option here is option a for gibberellin addition of gibberellin can artificially stimulate plant growth question 20 the autonomic nervous system consists of neurons or motor neurons that control involuntary actions okay example your heartbeat you know when you look at the broader picture you are looking at the nervous system the central nervous system and the peripheral nervous system so under the peripheral nervous system we have the sensory and we have the motor neurons okay so then under the motor then we now talk about the somatic and the autonomic nervous system okay right here under the autonomic that is where we now talk about motor neurons that carry instruction to the involuntary um, aspects okay under your autonomic nervous system we can have further division parasympathetic and sympathetic so basically going by or going back to the question given us the autonomic nervous system consists of neurons that control involuntary and that is an example which we are pointing to at bit option b is the correct option question 21 the water circle is maintained mainly by evaporation and condensation of water in the environment it is very important that we are aware that water circulates majorly in the abiotic components of the environment okay the biotic uh, components is just a little touch and whatever water that enters into the biotic component is still um, lost or it, it returns back to the abiotic um, environment or abiotic component via transpiration via respiration excretion and decay so going back to the question given us the water circle is maintained mainly by evaporation and condensation of water in the environment option b is the correct option question 22 plants of temperate origin can be grown in tropical areas in the vegetation zones of where the guinea savannah option b is the option we are looking for kindly click on the link in the description below it's going to make you get to the my school website there you can get the my school mobile app or download the my school software so join me as we solve question 23 organisms living in an eustering habitat are adapted to what okay they cope with fluctuating um, level of salinity or salt okay a new stirring habitat is actually where fresh water and salt water mix resulting in a brackish water and um, animals organisms found there animals like um, anicola you know it has um, the body cells has, has lot of tolerance or a white amount of tolerance for this fluctuation okay some of them can adapt in the environment by having a kind of inbuilt os uh, osmoregulatory mechanism 
okay, why some have a fairly impermeable body surfaces. So the correct option here is that they should withstand white fluctuation in salinity. That is option C. So option C is the correct option. Do not forget to hit that like button. Always click on the subscribe button and do not forget to tap on bell notification so you can get notified immediately we upload the next video segment just for you. Question 24. The presence of steel to root pneumatophores, sunken stomata, and salt glands are adaptive features of plants found in the mangrove swamps. Okay, so the mangrove swamp is actually a forest that has um, very um, small trees, okay, that has broad leaves. They are evergreen. Okay, but though this um, particular kind of um, habitat uh, actually has uh, some challenges attached to it, okay? We are looking at a water-clogged kind of setting whereby the oxygen content is very low. So the pneumatophores are needed to take in atmospheric oxygen, okay, to augment whatever thing is being made available. You can see um, this kind of their roots that they have, it can go deep because of the substratum uh, we have there is not strong enough to carry large trees, okay. So these roots are well spread al al um, around a well wide coverage so that it can support them as well. So the sunken somas and um, salt glands is just for um, osmotic regulation, okay, um, controlling the amount of water loss to the environment and also excretion of salt, SS salt. So, this is definitely adaptive features of plants that can be found in option B for mangrove swamps. Question 25 Which of the following animals can exist solely on the water they get from food and metabolic reactions? Okay, these are, of course, desert dwellers okay so you know they have to adapt to number one um, scarce water resource and as well wide range of or high temperature exposure so they do this by you know some of them that are actually um, vertebrates okay they during the day they rest in burrows okay because of the high temperature so that makes them active at night you are talking about snakes lizards and what have you another thing they can also do is for them not to have sweat pores this is to conserve water loss so the major source of water or sources of water for them is from the food they eat and a kind of adjustment when it comes to their metabolic reaction so the correct option is option b for desert dwellers 26 the most likely first colonizers of a bare rock are what legions okay so you know lichens they actually you, are, you can find them on rock surfaces and tree backs okay lichen is made up of um, the relationship or association between algae and fungi okay fungi or the fungus there provides shelter while the algae photosynthesis provides the food okay so um, and one can barely exist without the other in this kind of association so definitely the correct option is option c the like the lichen so when you come to moses and liverwort they are bryophytes you actually find them in damp places so a bare rock is out of it talking about fence we are looking at pteridophytes they are land plants that have stem roots and leaves okay so fungi no, no that is out of it so lichen is the association between the algae and the fungus and you can find them on rock surfaces so the correct option here is option c for lichen 27 the current capacity of the habitat is reached when the population growth begins to do what so while well, you are looking at the logistic curve okay so the habitat capacity you can see a sign when the capacity has been reached and that sign is that the population growth begins to decline okay it begins to go down all right this is due to um, an increase in competition okay and there's going to be scarce resources at a certain point population growth will amount to zero okay so one sign you should see concerning population growth when the habitat capacity is being reached is that population growth will decline so option c is the correct option number 28 the abiotic factor that 
control human population include what? So when you talk about abiotic factors, we are looking at temperature, light intensity, water current, we are looking at humidity as well, we are looking at wind, of course. So I can point out that the extreme versions of these factors should be flooding and earthquake, okay? So the correct option here is option C for flooding and earthquake. When this um, event, when they come up or when these factors, when they, they are being compounded, you have this happening and of course it's going to affect human settlements or human population in a particular environment. So the correct option here should be option C for flooding and earthquake. Please remember that you can ask those questions right now. All you need to do, click on the link in the description below. It's going to take you to the My School website. There you are going to meet with our solution providers. And within moments, your questions are going to get the required answers. So join me as we solve question 29. An indigenous method of renewing and maintaining soil fertility is by what? Option D, crop rotation and shifting cultivation. Crop rotation is the planting of... Um, different kinds of crop, okay, sequentially on a particular piece of land. This can help to break a um, circle of um, disease, uh, the building up of um, resistance, weeds, or whatever. Um, shifting cultivation, you know, you plant on a particular, you cultivate a particular piece of land for a certain time, and you abandon it, okay, for it to um, recover some of its nutrients. So, this, of course, are indigenous method being employed. So we have an indigenous method of renewing and maintaining soil fertility is by option D, crop rotation and shifting, crop, shifting cultivation. Perhaps you have better explanation in tackling any of the questions we have solved so far. Please would like to know what you need to do. Use that comment section below. Indicate the question number and the explanations you like to share. 30. The disease caused by waterborne pathogens include what? Includes typhoid and cholera. Just like for cholera, you know, this is caused by vibrocholeria and this is by salmonella type. Okay, so um, this is spread through um, water, okay, that is contaminated with um, physics. Okay, so food or water contaminated with physics, just for the two. Um, gonorrhea is true, gonorrhea and syphilis is true, direct contact with um, doing sexual intercourse. Okay, so uh, if you look at tuberculosis, this is caused by mycobacterium tuberculosis. Okay, this is airborne. All right, so the correct option is option D for typhoid and cholera. Question 31. Which of the following is true in blood transfusion? So, um, blood transfusion may be needed when there is an accident, okay, and the victim has lost plenty of blood or doing surgical operations. So, what do we consider to be true doing blood transfusion? You know, when you talk about the different uh, blood groups, we talk about A, B, AB, and O. Okay, uh, we are looking at the presence of antigens on the red blood cell and antibodies on the plasma or in the plasma. Okay, so this accounts for what we known as um, clumping or what we can tell as agglutination. Okay, once the blood groups are not compatible. Okay, due to the presence of the antigen from the donor and the antibody from the, recept the receiver or the receptor. So, let's look at the statement that is true or statement A. Person of blood group AB can donate blood only to another person of blood group AB. This is very correct. When you use the antigen and the antibody uh, concept just presented, when you look at statement B, persons of blood groups A and B can donate or receive blood from each other. This is incorrect, okay? Because in um, blood group B, okay, there's antigen B, but anti A, so antibody A. So definitely the presence of this will cause a problem. Likewise, um, considering blood group A, okay, there's antigen A and anti B. So anything coming from B poses a threat to life. So, statement C, a person of blood group AB can receive blood only from persons of blood group A or B. This is incorrect. AB can receive from all of the blood groups, okay, is a universal acceptor or receiver, okay. So, let's look at statement D, a person of blood group O can donate only to a person of blood group O. This is incorrect as well. Um, these are known as universal donor. Okay, so the correct statement here is statement A, a person of blood group AB can donate blood only to another person of blood group AB. Option A is super correct. 
32, a yellow maize is planted and all the fruits obtained are of yellow seeds. Okay, so when they are crossbred, yellow seeds and white seeds are obtained in a ratio of 3 ratio 1. The yellow seed is said to be white. Okay, so um, at first, when once the, the planting was done, we got all yellow seeds. And once these yellow seeds have been crossbred, what we had at the end of the day were in three ratio, one yellow in three, then the white seed in one. So what does that tell us? That tells us that the crossing is heterozygous. This is what I mean. Okay, so it, it tells us that um, we are talking about heterozygous yellow. The yellow is being dominant and the white is being recessive. I just use this as an illustration. So when this matches this, we have this. Okay, this to this, we have this. Okay, then this to this, we still have this. Then this to this, we have this. So this is homozygous white. That is just one. This is heterozygous yellow, heterozygous yellow, homozygous yellow. So in total, we have three yellows. Okay, that is three ratio one. If it is a genotypic ratio, we are looking at um, one homozygous yellow, okay, two heterozygous yellow, and one homozygous white. So three ratio one tells you that the yellow is dominant and the white is recessive. So let's go back to the screen and see if we have any of the options that present this concept to us. That is, of course, found in option D. Option D tells us that the yellow seed is said to be a dominant trait. Question 33. When a colorblind man marries a carrier woman, what is the probability of their offspring being colorblind? Okay, when you use the previous um, concepts we've just presented in the last video clip, you will find that the probability of their offspring being colorblind is 50%. And as well, we're going to have carrier children as well. But for the colorblind um, children, the probability is 50% option B. We've come to the end of this video segment, but there are definitely more content to come. All you need to do is to hit that like button. Do not forget to tap on the subscribe button and always hit bell notification so you can get alerts immediately we upload the next video segment just for you.